Hey, I'm Ben, a chef at Sorted Food, and today I'm going to show you how to make pancakes two different ways at home. Full of tips and tricks and hacks, which means it's completely idiot proof. This is the way I do it, this is the way absolutely you can do it. And to stop me getting too chefy and carried away, Mike, you're going to be behind the camera to keep me in check. You've got to represent us normals. Fair. First up, this is how to make the perfect fluffy pancakes. The point of today is two pancake recipes, but when I say recipes, you will never need a recipe ever again. It's just a ratio. One, one, one. One part eggs, one part milk, one part flour. For every portion you want to make, you need one egg. So two portions today, Mike and I, two eggs, but weigh them into a bowl, because that's the start of your ratio. One part egg. For us, two eggs, that's 108 grams. Remember it? This means this ratio will work wherever you are in the world, no matter how big or small your eggs are. Scoop the yolks into a jug. So, if you're making like meringues, you shouldn't really put your fingers into egg whites because natural oils in your fingers might get involved. We don't want super stiff egg whites, so this is just easy as. You remember, you're 108. You're now going to add exactly the same into your egg yolks. One part egg, one part milk. If you want to sub out your milk for buttermilk, you can. So if you heard of buttermilk pancakes, same, same. It's almost a bit like the sourness you get in sourdough bread, but it's also slightly thicker, generally. So it might give you a slightly thicker batter. Season at this stage, pinch of salt, pepper if you're doing savory ones. Same again of flour. So 108 grams again. The ratio is one, one, one. One part egg, one part milk, one part flour. Trying so hard to get the exact. I'm a gram over. Are you allowing me a 1% tolerance? Right, so to get fluffy pancakes, two methods. One, a pinch of baking powder. So that is a chemical raising agent. When it gets wet, it's gonna react and give you the fluff. The second way to make these super fluffy is whisk up egg whites, and that's why we separate them out. Chemical in the form of baking powder, mechanical in the form of that. Don't snigger, <laughs> don't snigger. To just looking for nice and soft kind of fluffy peaks. So it's just gonna hold, as with all batters, wet into dry. So now, egg yolks and milk, whisk up, add to your flour and baking powder. Stir in as you go. And then fold in all of your egg whites and all of that air. And when I say fold, I mean swap the spoon rather than a whisk, and you're just kind of folding it over, cutting through the middle, fold it over. You've now got wet in there, so it's activated baking powder, and you end up with gorgeous fluffy pancakes. Ladles, I think, add mess, so just add it back into your jug. You've already used the jug, it's already dirty. Look how fluffy that is. This, I would say, is the most important thing. The pan should be preheated and at an even temperature. So not just searingly hot, but you've kind of had it on the heat for a few minutes to level out the temperature which you're gonna cook. And either butter the pan or butter the batter. I'm gonna butter the pan. And the reason with fluffy ones I prefer to the butter the pan is you get that slight brown butter nuttiness going on as well. For this batter, pour it into the pan and kind of let it find its own level. It should end up roughly circular. You can always press it out a little bit if you want it slightly thinner. Watching it slowly, you can see it all kind of dries and sets up, and that's when you know it's cooked. When basically you can touch it and you don't end up with batter on your finger. Just get underneath it and flip it. Again, about another minute on the other side, then repeat the whole process until your batter's used up. Simple ratio, a few tips and hacks, what you end up with a stack of fluffy pancakes. Butter, maple syrup, streaky bacon, brunch, breakfast, done. But what I like to do midweek is do an all day breakfast. One, two, three pancakes. Garlic and thyme mushrooms. Poached egg. Crispy bacon. Now there are absolutely more complex pancake recipes out there, but this is the foundation. This is an absolute perfect starting point. Should we move on? Next up, the thinner, more classic crepe recipe. And I make this to use up pretty much whatever's left over in the fridge. Again, a simple ratio. One, 
one and a half. So that's one part egg, one part milk, and a half part flour. Again, you're just gonna crack in as many eggs as you are cooking for people. Take the measurement, 114 grams. Tear it and add the same of milk, 114 grams. At this point, season it, pinch of salt, some black pepper. That's your wet stuff. Pretty much the third and final ingredient is flour. We're gonna use plain flour, um, because you don't necessarily need these to rise. These are flat crepes, and you don't want strong flour because they can get a little bit tough with gluten. So plain flour, or all-purpose flour, cake flour, and you're gonna add half. Remember the ratio? One part egg, one part milk, half flour. So what's half of 114? It's a good question. <laughs> 57. <laughs> so 57 grams of flour. And uh, it sounds precise, but generally, round it up. Always add wet into dry, and then it'll be pretty much lump free. And just slowly but surely, combine it. That is crepe batter. Now, two trains of thought here. You can either add a little bit of melted butter into your batter to lace the whole batter. That will save you having to butter the pan each time, or you can butter the pan. It's entirely up to you. Any preference? Lace it. Let's lace it. Let's get lacy. It's, it sounds chefy. It does. <laughs> Just about a tablespoon of butter. You seasoned it right at the start. That's literally good to go. A couple of schools of thought on batter. Leave it to rest if you've just been whisking it up. It's better if it relaxes a little bit. Um, in the meantime, you can heat up a pan. This happens to be a crepe pan and flat, but you can basically do it in any frying pan. Now you've got it in your jug, it's easy. You're just gonna pour it into your preheated pan. You're gonna put in enough to be able to swill it right round into a thin layer. And the first one, you just judge that and work it out. It's actually quite comforting that you don't get it right the first time. Yeah, I, I think you've got to get your eye in. You forget how big the pan is, you forget how kind of thin it is, how hot it is. So if the pan is nice and preheated and even cooking and you've got it nice and thin, when it comes away from the edges, it's probably a minute, 90 seconds. And then you can just get underneath it. You can always check and peel back and have a look then you just want to flip it. And you want to be confident with that. Just go for it. Oh, you didn't even go for the pancake flip. Well, I wanted to show you can keep control. Yeah, you can flip it, but even a small thing like this, you can just get underneath it in one smooth motion. Again, about another minute on the other side, and then you can just slide it onto a plate lined with baking paper. Now this means that you can basically stack them up um, and keep them all warm until you serve it if you're cooking for more people, because you can obviously only cook one pancake at a time. But the next one, ready to go into the pan. You can see the lovely golden mottled laced effect. You'll get that on the first side of the pancake you cook. The second side tends to not look as laced. But that's not a problem, because as long as you fold it and fill it the way that it looks good, it's fine. Lacy pancake, you wouldn't wear your lacy underwear inside out, would you? Oh, <laughs> I didn't see that coming. <laughs> I'm not gonna let you get away without tossing that this time. Just a sheer panic. <laughs> In between cooking them, and bear in mind they take a couple of minutes each, you can create a filling. Now, without the black pepper in the batter, it could just literally be squeeze a lemon, drizzle of honey, you could throw some fresh berries in there, some sliced up banana, make it your own. But if we're talking savoury and using up leftovers, I'm chopping up some fresh oregano, because it's what we've got, but use basil, thyme, you go you, and then mix it into some roasted veg. Again, whatever was left in the fridge, peppers, courgette, onion, garlic. You can see I cut it up pretty small and the oven was pretty hot and it literally took 10 minutes, the same time it takes to cook three or four pancakes. Crepe origami is important. Generous on filling, fill half of it. Fold it over, fill a quarter of it, fold it over, and then repeat. Finish, fresh oregano flowers. How fancy is that, Mike? Two options for you. You've got the crepes, which couldn't be an easier method. One, one, half as a ratio with stuffed ours, with roasted veg and goat's cheese. Over here, one extra tiny step in the method, but an even easier ratio, one, one, one. All day breakfast on a stack of fluffy pancakes. And here's the thing. If you want a gluten-free version of this, just sub out the plain flour for gram flour. That's chickpea flour. Otherwise, follow exactly the same method and if you want a dairy-free version of these pancakes, just sub out the milk for soy milk, 
almond milk or oat milk. Otherwise, same ratios. We'd love to hear what you do with your pancakes, your tips, your tricks, your flavours you like to put in it and on it. Comment down below and join the conversation over on Twitter. But if you want to see us chefs show you a bit more of what we cook at home, then give the video a like. Can we eat them now? Yeah. <laughs> Goat cheese is a bit of a luxury, I don't always have goat cheese kicking around. But I always have an end of parmesan or some cheddar. I'm going to try some of these crepes. Oh, that's great!